Hey everyone, you're listening to Ankur Variku on Voice with Variku. On this podcast, I talk to you about entrepreneurship, how to grow in life, manage personal finances, handle failures, and a lot more things that just come to my mind. The episode begins. In this podcast episode, which is basically an audio version of a Twitter thread that I wrote and was extremely well received, I talk about 10 90-day challenges that you can pick up for your mind, body, or soul. Number one, structured thinking. Now, our mind is constantly buzzing with thoughts. And before we start speaking, what we fail to do is structure them because there's just so much that's happening. I know most of you would be experiencing this where what you want to say, and there's just so much you want to say because it's in your head. So by the time you end up saying it, it doesn't come across in the way you wanted it to. So what is needed is a way to pace our thoughts. And that is where writing helps. Writing is the slowest form of expression. So when we're writing, we're, we're not just thinking about what we wish to communicate, we're also selecting the most important thought from all the other thoughts that we have in our head. So the first challenge is write every day for 90 days. For the next 90 days, just write every day. It doesn't matter what you write on, it doesn't matter how long you write. The important thing is at the end of that exercise, you will always conclude with this sentence. This tells me that dash, fill in the blanks. This tells me that, fill in the blanks. It could be anything. This tells me that I am good at this. This tells me that she was feeling this way. This tells me that the world is whatever it is. You have to end with a conclusion. Number two challenge, confident speaking. Now, it's obvious we get conscious when it comes to public speaking. Most of us dread public speaking. So even when we are confident of the content, we will dread speaking in public because we're scared about what will people think of us. And if you want to get over that, for the next 90 days, record a video of yours on any topic. Just start with your phone, record yourself and a video, any topic. But the key is do not share it with anyone. Because when you share it with people, you begin to think about how they will judge it or they will receive it. Even if it's the closest person on earth for you, do not share it. You review it yourself, you identify the improvements, and then you correct them the next day. And you keep doing that. I guarantee you, you will be a completely changed person when it comes to confidence speaking at the end of these 90 days if you were to do this. Number three, sugar craving. We live in a culture that thrives on sugar. And whenever you feel like having sugar, the best thing you can do is drink a glass of water and then have sugar-free chewing gum. What does this do? Number one, water fills up your stomach. So it lessens the craving that you would have for any food item. And then gum satiates your sugar craving. Because you're chewing it, you also can't have anything else. 90 days. And I promise you, you wouldn't crave for sugar anymore. Number four, reading. Reading is a big skill that a lot of people wish to acquire, but it is hard to do so because we don't know the habit of reading. So pick up a book that you wish to read, not a book that you think you should read. A lot of people pick up books that they think they should read or they will look cool in front of others when they announce their reading but that's not the book you want to read. You want to pick a book that you want to read. It could be even a comic. It could be a magazine. It could be anything. Pick a book that you wish to read and read for 10 minutes every single day for 90 days. Do not share the name of the book with anyone or even the fact that you're reading it. Do it only for yourself. And if the book doesn't interest you, for whatever reasons, drop it and pick another one. Because it is as much the book's responsibility to hold your attention as it is your responsibility to give it attention. But what's important is that you read every day for 10 minutes for the next 90 days. <clears throat> Number five, meditation. <clears throat> and here's how you would build it. Put on a nature sound. It could be a beach, it could be rain, it could be birds chirping, whatever it is. Sit straight, either on the floor if you're comfortable with that or on a chair if you're not comfortable sitting on the floor. Close your eyes and just observe your thoughts for 10 minutes. Don't try to stop any thought. 
Don't be like, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I shouldn't be thinking this way. No. Don't try to record any thought. Oh my God, I remembered something I have to record it. No. And don't try to go deep into any thought. Oh, why am I thinking this way? Let me figure this out. Oh, this is interesting. Let me go deeper. None. All you have to do is just observe your thoughts. As if you're observing cars that are passing by on the road. You're not attached to any car. You at best observe the color, the driver, admire the make or the model, and then it's gone. And you move to the next car. And you move to the next thought. You move to the next emotion. 90 days, my friend, and you will be changed as a person if you follow this. Number six, getting rejected. We all hate rejection. We, in fact, fear it. We fear it so much that we do not even start anything for the fear of being rejected. But rejection is actually a muscle, a muscle that can be built for us to get comfortable with it. And here's how you do it. Every day for the next 90 days, pick up a small, immaterial, harmless task where you have a very high chance of getting rejected. Any task where you have a high chance of getting rejected and it should be small, harmless, like it can't change your life. So examples, asking a stranger for a favor, sending a cold email, saying hi to a random person, <laughs> asking parents for some permission, asking your manager for a new assignment, something which is harmless and you have a high chance of getting rejected. And when you do get rejected, because there's a high chance that you will, reflect upon three things. How did I feel? Why did I feel the way that I felt? And what could I have done to be accepted instead of rejected? And then attempt the same task again with this reflection now in mind. In 90 days, I promise you, you will have a very different and a meaningful relationship with rejection. Number seven, resisting the obvious. If we do what everyone else does, we will end up more or less where everyone else is. So if you want to have a shot at changing your orbit, if you want to be dramatically different from what others are doing, you have to look beyond the obvious and consider it, if not follow it. But we're not trained to think beyond the obvious. School, college, even work, it trains us to think about the obvious, to just look at that straight path that everyone else has followed and not deviate yourself from that. So how do you build the muscle of resisting the obvious for 90 days when you're faced with any decision any decision at all ask yourself what would most people in my situation do what would most people in my situation do simple question and then for some time ignore that most probable option assume it doesn't even exist it's not even an option you can't pick that and then force yourself to consider other alternatives, as crazy as it sounds, but force yourself to consider other alternatives. Write them down in your notebook. And for each of those options, ask yourself two questions. What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the best thing that can happen? This simple exercise for 90 days will change the way that you look at decisions. It doesn't mean that you'll always start taking the non-obvious choices, what it does is it will train you to consider the non-obvious choices when you are faced with any decision. Number eight, waking up on time. If you get up at 8 a.m. today and you wish to get up at, say, 6 a.m. tomorrow, it won't happen by just setting up the alarm. That's what most of us do. We set up the alarm for 6 a.m. It might work for two days, three days, maybe even a week. <clears throat> Post which, your body is like, oh, I want to go back to 8 a.m. I want to go back to 8 a.m. The key is to trick the body to waking up early. How do you do that? Whatever time you get up today, set the alarm for 10 minutes earlier. No more than that. So 10, so 8 a.m. becomes 7.50 a.m. Get up at 7.50 a.m. No snoozing, and you do that for 10 straight days. Your body won't even notice the difference. 10 minutes, it wouldn't even notice the difference. Again, 10 minutes earlier for 10 days. 10 minutes earlier for 10 days. By the 90th day, you'll be waking up an hour and a half earlier than you were. And of course, that's not going to happen if your body doesn't feel that it has got the adequate sleep that it deserves. So ideally, you should have also slept on time as well. 
Because the key to waking up early is not waking up early. The key to waking up early is sleeping on time. Number nine, overthinking. Our mind is our best friend because it has the power to imagine, but it is also our worst enemy because it is trained to imagine the worst more than anything else. And our mind by design focuses on possibilities, not probabilities. Something that I spoke about in an earlier podcast episode as well. You might want to check that out. Every time we set up, every time we step out, there is a possibility of us getting hit by a bus, right? But we still step out fearlessly. How come? It's because we've told our brain that while the possibility of getting hit by a bus is real, the probability of that is low. So for 90 days, assign probabilities to every possibility that comes to your mind. When you're overthinking, when you're going into that overdrive and all those possibilities are emerging, this can happen, this can happen, this can happen. Physically, write down the probability of that happening. And at the end of this 90-day exercise, you would have trained your mind and thus tricked it to not overpower you with its possibilities because you now know the probabilities as well. Number 10, procrastination. The beloved procrastination. Here's the simple reason we procrastinate. We think we still have time. That's it. We think we still have time and that's the reason we keep pushing the can further down the road. So the way to deal with procrastination is to realize that we do not, in fact, have time. Here's how to think about this. If I asked you to clap every second, you'll do a near-perfect job, right? Clap every second. So one, tap, 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 tap. It's almost near-perfect. If I ask you to clap every five seconds, there'll be times when you begin to falter. Okay, go clap one, then five seconds, one. Five. Huh? You get the rhythm. So there'll be times when you will do it on the sixth second and so on and so forth. If I ask you to now clap every 17 seconds, you'll be out of sync instantly. There's no way that you will be clapping every 17 seconds. So the goal is to break down every task into a one second clap. And that's what you have to do. So for 90 days, pick a task you would otherwise procrastinate and break it down into smaller tasks. Really small tasks, the one second clap. And then estimate the time it would take for you to accomplish that small task. Add up the individual times and you have your answer. That's when we realize we actually do not have time. Isn't it fascinating that just 90 days can change your life if you commit to it? Like literally just three months to a whole new mindset. That's all that it takes. You don't have to pick all of them in one go. In fact, the key is to train your mind, be patient with it, be calm with it, and keep challenging it. And if someone told you that in less than three years, which is what it would take if you were to pick up each of these 10 challenges over three months each, you can think in a structured manner, you can speak confidently, you can reject sugar, you can read regularly, you can meditate every day, handle rejection, think laterally, wake up early, not overthink and not procrastinate, you would be laughing at that person. But that person is me today. I am telling you that these 90-day challenges can work for you. And I share with them, not as an expert, instead as somebody who's tried each one of them, has witnessed the powerful outcomes. Give your life those 30-odd months, just 30 months, and you could potentially change your life forever. A life that will be 900 plus months, if not more. Would you spend 5% of your life just trying to make the remaining 95% better? We are the outcome of the habits we keep, the thoughts we store, and the lesson we choose to learn. Most importantly, we are the outcome of the pain we agree to endure. All the best. Thank you for listening to this episode of Voice with Variku. To be notified of upcoming episodes, be sure to subscribe and follow the show on this app right now. Also, don't forget to rate and review the show because that just feels nice. Thank you.